Hey everyone, Neverchill Tech here and today I would like to show you how you can install the latest release of Atmosphere version 1.7.0 on your Nintendo Switch OLED. So right in front of me I have a Nintendo Switch OLED that is hardware modified. So I do have the Pico slash PicoFly module installed, soldered straight onto the SoC. Um, so if you do not have that and if you do have a Switch OLED then please you need to stop watching this video, make sure your Switch OLED is hardware modified and then you can follow along. If you do, however, have a Nintendo Switch LCD version, one prior to June 2018, then you can find a link in the video description with a detailed guide on how you can actually install the Atmosphere custom firmware onto it. But this guide is uh, specifically for the Switch OLED that is hardware modified and that's running firmware version 18.0 or below. So if I go to system settings, you can see that I'm running firmware version 18.0.0 and Atmosphere has just been updated to actually support this firmware. So just to show you if I now power off my switch and try to boot it up, I will get an error message since this one will use the PicoFly that's installed and it's sold to the SoC to actually boot the switch. But since there are no files on a microSD card, since I do not have a microSD card installed, I'll just get an error message whenever I try to boot the Nintendo Switch. So we'll get this no SD card message right here. So if you have a Switch OLED and that's running firmware version 18.0 and you want to install the Atmosphere custom firmware, then please follow along. So first things first, we need to actually go ahead and go over to our PC and we need to prepare a microSD card. So I have I already got a micro SD card right here. So mine is only 32 gigs, but I recommend at least 64 gigs, but that's the bare minimum. I would actually recommend a 128 gig or 200 gig micro SD card. But for this uh, tutorial, 32 will also work. Um, make sure that it's formatted to FAT32. So you can either do that in Windows itself, but if you do not have this FAT32 option listed right here, you can also use a tool like mini tool partition to actually partition a micro SD card and format it to FAT32. Once you're, you've done that, then you can go ahead and go to the video description. And there I have a few links. So I do have this HATS uh, download link. So HATS is actually Hackety Atmosphere Tinfoil and Signature Patches. So it's actually a pre-packaged file with all those modules and custom firmware files already pre-installed. So that's really nice and it's really easy to actually use the zip file to run a custom firmware. So I just scroll down and download the latest zip release. So in my case it's 1.7.0-1. So once you've downloaded the hats package, make sure to put those files on your desktop. So I've got the hats package right here. Do not worry about these two files, those are used for the Switch LCD version. So just open up the hats zip file and make sure to drag and drop these files onto the root of your micro SD card that you've just formatted. And depending on the speed of your micro SD card, this process may take anywhere from like a few seconds to a few minutes. So what we'll do afterwards, once these files have been copied over, we'll actually create a NAND backup. So we'll create a backup of our internal NAND of the internal storage of our Switch OLED and make a copy of that to our micro SD card and then we can run the uh, custom firmware completely separate from the internal NAND. So in case something goes wrong when we're doing some stuff in the custom firmware, we can still go back and just boot to the official firmware. So as you can see, it's almost done copying over these files. And now you can just unplug the micro SD card adapter and SD card from your PC. And if you do not have a micro SD card or a micro SD card adapter, I do have some affiliate links in the video description for you to check out. But then we simply need to plug in this micro SD card, which is very hard to do on camera. And there we are. Then you just want to power it on. And now we should not see an error message, but it should boot us straight into Hackety. You can set up the date and time, but I just well, skip this. And then first things first, we actually want to create a SD card partition. So we need to partition our micro SD card to actually copy over the NAND files from our internal storage to the micro SD card. So go to partition SD card, hit OK, then drag the MUMC across to let's say 12 gigs, which is fine. Hit next step, hit start. And now it will start partitioning our micro SD card and prepare it for an MUMC partition. So press the power button right here to continue. And now it will first of all backup all the files that we've just copied over to a micro SD card 
put it on the cache of our internal storage. Then it will partition the microSD card. So we will have an internal storage on the microSD card. So on our MU MMC partition of around 12 gigs. And then we still have around, well, let's say 20 a little less gigs available as external storage in MU MMC. So just wait for a few seconds for your partition manager to do its thing. So it's already restoring the files from our cache back to the micro SD card. So it shouldn't really take that long. And again, depending on the size and speed of your micro SD card, this may be a bit faster. And there we go. So now it's done. You can close out this menu and now we can actually go back to home. Go to MUMMC and now we want to create an MUMMC partition. So it still says disabled right here. And that's because we still need to create one. Then hit SD partition. Select part one. And now it will actually copy over the files from our NAND flash to our micro SD cards to the partition that Hackerty has just created for us. And as you can see, since I've only enabled um, uh, MUMMC partition of 12 gigs, this process goes rather quickly. And again, depending on the speed and size of your micro SD card, this may be even faster for you. But once this process is done, I will come back to you. So it's almost done copying over all the files. There it is. So done, it took 1 minute and 56 seconds, so not that long. And already says that we have the MUMMC partition enabled. Uh, if it still says disabled right here, just hit change MUMMC, hit SD Royal 1, hit OK. And now we should have MUMMC enabled. So you can go to home. Now we can go to launch and actually boot to the custom firmware. So you have three options right here. So we have the SysMMC semi-stock. So this will just boot our switch to the official firmware without any atmosphere files installed. Then we have the SysMMC custom firmware that will load up our internal NAND with, with the custom firmware files from atmosphere installed. Do not use that option if you want to have a clean internal NAND storage. The option that we're looking for is MUMMC custom firmware. Just tap on it and this will boot atmosphere from our micro SD card. So here we already see the atmosphere boot logo. And just give it a few seconds for the initial boot to boot to the switch lock screen. And I'll show you that we're actually running Atmosphere from our micro SD card. There we are. So we can unlock our switch. And now if we go to system settings and scroll down to system, you can actually see that we're running firmware version 18.0.0 with Atmosphere 1.7.0. E, so the E stands for MUMMC. So we're actually running Atmosphere from our micro SD card. And if I go to data management, you can actually see the partitions of our micro SD card. So the system memory is actually also a micro SD card. Any micro SD card is, of course, the second partition on it. And now if we go to the album, you can actually see that we do have access to the homebrew menu and all the tools available right here. So you can play around with it. As I said, the hats package comes pre-included with lots of applications and files. So you can tinker with those. And now if you want to go back and boot to the official firmware, all you have to do is just restart your switch. And actually, since this is a hardware modified switch OLED, you can also power it off, power it back on, and it will bring you to the Hackett boot logo in, uh, bootloader interface. So there we are. So now we can either go to launch, go to sysmmc semi-stock, or what we can do is we can actually go to reboot and reboot to the official firmware. And this way we actually know that it will bypass the Hackett bootloader and boot straight to the official firmware because the other option, which was also listed, states that says that it's semi-stock, but not entirely stock since we still use Hackett to boot it off to the official firmware. So I recommend to just hit the reboot button and then go to the official firmware. And now if I go to system settings right here, go to system, you can see that now we're running the official firmware. So if you have any eShop games or have cartridge games that you want to play online, just boot to the official firmware. Now you can connect back to the internet and now you can play your games as well. And again, if you want to go back to the custom firmware, we have a hardware modified switch OLED. So we do not need any payload injectors. You can simply power off your switch OLED, press and hold the power button, just like you normally would to power it on. And again, it will bring us back to Hackett. You can go to launch, you can go to the Hackett 
a bootloader interface and boot to the custom firmware installed on our MU MMC partition. And again, this will just boot Atmosphere from a micro SD card. And yeah, that's basically the tutorial for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you need any stuff, there are affiliate links in the video description. If you have a Switch LCD, I do have a separate guide linked in the video description as well. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos, guys. Peace out.